Buongiorno. How are we doing? It's 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 truly an awesome responsibility to share with the people of God what God has laid on my heart and I give thanks for the opportunity to share again and I ask that you continue to, to pray for me. It's Youth Sunday and um you know when you think about Youth Sunday, you know some some of the the more mature persons will say, but this don't work for me, Youth Sunday. You know, but all of us, all of those who are older or more mature, if I should use that term, have young people around us and have influence on young people. And those who are young also have an opportunity to hear from God what God is saying to you. Um, so so that, that's it. So all of us are part of this thing. Because once you have young people around you, then you, you can influence. So if you hear this, if you hear the word and it speaks to you and you know someone around you, then you can share it with them. And for those who are young, it's also an opportunity again. Now before I get into the message this morning, I just, you know, social commentary and all that is going on in, in Jamaica right now. With the church getting a beating, so to speak. I just want to warn us and to encourage us that we, and, and I must say this, I'm happy that I'm a part of a, a ministry that is not focused on a single leader, but of a group of leaders that point me to Jesus and I want to encourage you that if at any time you find yourself in a position where you are distra distracted by what the leaders are doing or not doing and you are discouraged because the leaders are not playing their part and everything and you want to move away from God be careful if also you find yourself in a position where you are getting so connected to the leaders and less on God, be careful. Pastor says so, Ella says so. We should stick to what the word of God says. Amen? I, I, I beg you open your mic and say amen. Because it comes back to the word of God. Focus on the word, not on what pastor say or what elder say. So if you agree, you can open your mic and say amen. 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 That's where it is. The word of God. Amen. Praise God. I was I was talking to somebody the other day and the person said to me you know on Sundays I don't really have my devotion because I I go to church what mm -mm. <laughs> what mm. stay in the word yeah. stay in the word stay in the word people I want to encourage you to do that mm. Stay in the word. Let's let, let's go to what we're talking about this morning, cause that is another message all in of itself, eh? This morning, because it's you Sunday, we want to look a little on what's happening, social media. Mm. Social media. The passage has already been read, but I will read it again. And it says. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Wow. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. 
Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light. Now, really and truly what I want to talk about this morning is a new word that's out there called influencers. You mature persons, you don't know what this word is. I, I don't want to say old. I, I, want, I want to use the word mature. Influencers. There are a lot of social media influencers out there. And I want to say it's actually not a new word because as Christians we are called to be influencers. We are called to be salt and light. Which by nature of their core functions, they change everything they come in contact with. Now for the, the cooks and the chefs out there. When you put salt in the food, eh, it makes the food taste a little better. Eh? Yes. Now, you know, so the food that they didn't have on salt. Come on, man. Too fresh. It was like a salt. Nice it up. And the salt changes the flavor of the food. It's not the food change the flavor of the salt, you know. It's the salt. And we are called to be salt. And we are also called to be light. Now the last time I checked, you see darkness don't remove light, you know. There is nowhere in this world that you put darkness and darkness remove light. Darkness is the absence of light. If you turn on a little match or whatever you use, or a little back in the day, a little cursing eye lamp and thing. Now we have sophisticated desk lamp and we have mood lighting and all those things. Once you switch on, once you put that cursing eye in that lamp and you light the wick with a little match, the room bright up. We are the light of the world. We are influencers already. We are called to be influencers. Now the reason why I, I, I came upon this, this message is because about a month ago, I was at work and somebody was talking about there was a social media influencer in Jamaica. And the person was going, oh, She's here for the weekend and she's this and that and and it was almost like Jesus came again. The second coming. And I'm like, what? Yeah, she's here. You know, she's here in Jamaica. I'm like, what? And that prompted me to put together this message. Because our young people are being influenced by people that just find some niche or something and you know what i ask a person let me see let me see this person they show me nice beautiful girl and everything and you know and when i looked at her, let me be honest with you i asked the person is she real and you know what i mean by real right because she really nice and shapely. I said, is she real? Because it looked too real to be real. So she said, no. So I said, what? So I said, show me the picture when she wasn't as real as she's real now. Show me the picture. Beautiful girl. But she never have the the enhancements and i said but come on how can you be following somebody like this how can you be influenced by someone like this who is not even comfortable with how they were made we are made in the image and likeness of god and people are going on crazy and then after i prepared the message the monday 
this news came out. Jada Chiefs, American model, social media influencer, caught legal possession of firearm in Jamaica. The one day after, she has six point one million followers on, on, on Instagram. We must make sure that we are not we are following after God. And this is this is influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself. The character to have an effect on the character development. So, so these people out there, they are having an impact on our characters, our development, our behavior. They're causing us to, to do things. And then, and then I saw the same person at work and she was online and she was watching another influencer. And the influencer said, I am drinking tea. And the young lady at work, she responded online to say, I am drinking tea as well. And you know what? The influencer who was live said, oh, and called her name. Oh, you're drinking tea. What are you drinking? That was it. She went ballistic. Oh, she answered me. Oh, Lord, she answered me. And she came over to me and said, you know what she just did? She answered me. And she slapped me for about a good minute before she could tell me what happened. And I said, wow. If Jesus has influence on us like that, how crazy will we get about him? I say, oh, he touched me. I want to tell everybody. He touched me. He answered me. He answered my prayer. Eh? Whew. Let me move on. Whoa. You know one problem with, with, with Instagram is Lichelle and Tamara will know. You see, my Bible tells me, be ye followers of me, even as I am a follower of Christ. Now when I, somebody follow me on Instagram and then I follow them. Something some so off like with, with that. Some so enough because we are called to be followers of Christ. So you are follow me and me are follow you. That means that we're in the same position. We're not going anywhere. So we must be careful of who we follow. We must be careful of who we follow, people. And people are running after how many followers they have and who is following them and it caused them to do things that they are not supposed to do. It caused them to put themselves in position. It caused them to be, be taking pictures all over the place. And be, you know, because the last picture that they took is it just up too long. And my followers need to see a different picture, to see a different side of me. I see young ladies taking pictures now and you see them back more than you see them face. And we have to be careful. I see men taking pictures and them find themselves in compromising positions and they want to take a picture that people will like. I wonder how many people are going to like my picture. So we do it for the like or the love. And God is saying to us, follow me. Paul said this, follow me as I follow Christ. Not follow me, you know. But follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ, people. <sighs> Let's move on. Time is going. 
First Timothy 4 verse 12, it says, Do, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. It's Youth Sunday. Eh? Don't let anyone look down on you. because. But set an example. Young people, you can set an example for anyone and everyone. You can set an example for the older ones as well. Well, young people, we normally say, oh, the elder, the master, the example, the leader, the master, the example. You're not reading this. Read this. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. want to dissect each of these set an example in speech Ephesians 5 verse 4 nor should there be any obscenity foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thanksgiving I went somewhere to play some ball the other day and then it any and every word that was said was a was a was a word that shouldn't be used. So we finished playing ball and somebody somebody said, "Um, me can me can come with you." I said, "No, no, no, you can't do that. You can't say that, Christian. You can't say that. We as Christian must set an example. N foolish talk." mustn't come out of our mouth. People must be comfortable with speaking and speaking what, what to say as long as they're not saying anything lewd. And, and since when regular words are lewd? We must set an example, young people, in speech. I mean, nobody tells you, you can't say this, you can't, you, 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 you can't, this, you can't use two, you can't this, you can't. One tree. What? One, two, three. Why we can't say two? Set an example in speech. It's an opportunity now for you, for you to say, hey. Nothing is wrong with it. But we laugh. <laughs> you can't say that. You know. Fix up a talk. Ephesians 4.29 said, Do not let any any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen don't let any unwholesome talk but what is worthy of building up everyone that it may benefit those who listen set an example in speech if we are going to be influencers for jesus then we should we should be known as people who speak the hope and love of christ we can't be speaking one thing and speaking another thing we have to be consistent in our speech and we have to be consistent for christ let's move on we must set an example in conduct we are Christ representatives. We must know that wherever we go, they are watching and they are looking for Christians to demonstrate Christ-like behavior. We can't live double standard. Our conduct must be that of Christ. First Peter 1.15 But just as he called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. You see, we take holiness and we think that God wants us to be perfect. And people want us to be perfect. No. People are not looking for us to be perfect because they know that as Christians we will do. But if that's our consistent behavior,
if our conduct is not that of what the word of God says then we should fix it people are not looking for perfection and God is certainly not they are looking for sincerity and consistency somebody said to me the other day boy I wanted to I wanted to, to, to we, we can't do this we have, we have to do something else and I said well I, I you know I can't so, yeah, yeah man I know you're a Christian you can't do it man are we putting ourselves in a position as Christians where people will even decide for us that they're not going to involve us in their wrongs our conduct must be that of what Christ is, is happy with. Let's move on. Set an example in love. 1 Corinthians 13, 48. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Christians, we have to set an example in love. We have to love the unlovable. We have to, we have to love those who love and we have to love those who you know there are some people around you at work, at school, that them just hard to love. But let me tell you something. You see, if somebody is used to hate, and you bring hate to them, if you know anything about maths, you're adding hate upon hate. But if you bring love to them, it will first of all confuse them. And then second of all, it will attract them. You see, we have love. We, God is love. We've been reading in, 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 in 1st John. 1st, 2nd and 3rd John. And that talks about so much. Talks so much about love. Now this is love. First John 4 verse 7 and 8. If we read that and we don't love people, then we're in trouble. We must set an example in love. We must love others. We must love the unlovable. We must demonstrate that agape love, that unconditional love to people. And the last time I checked, in Acts, People came to the church more than ever, not through a message, but because of how Christians loved each other. Because of the love that we have for each other. And by extension, the love that we have for others. We can't say we're in this. And we say, you know, it's a, it's a brother, I don't mean, like him at all. We can't stand him. Oh, him? No, sir. Me not deal with him. Me walk far from him. Not even shake me or shake him out. Not even talk me or talk to him. Oh, him? She? Oh, God. Not to mention. That mustn't be, that, that mustn't come from our mouths, people. We have to set an example in love. We can be the leaders of hate in our homes, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our communities. We must be the first ones to extend a hand of love. We must set, set example. Demonstrate. Too many times people say, Oh, you see how she will live beside me. She had a Christian. If she a Christian, then me a Christian. If you're a Christian, me a Christian. And him go answer. 
Them going like some little fire ago. It's a long time we don't use that word. Them can't be Christian. I am not going to church because of that. What? We have to fix those relationships. We have to demonstrate that love. We have to set that example. I have a little note there. If we're unable to demonstrate Jesus' love, nothing else we say or do matters. You can preach from now till next year. 1 Corinthians 13 1 says it. If you we let the son up what you say? No, first Corinthians 13 1. You are it just says if you if you speak with the tongue, tongues of men and of angels and do not have love, you are like a clanging gong or a sounding symbol. You know what that is? You are just a noise maker, you're just making noise. If you don't have love and you have to speak to people about God, you are just making noise. And I'm I'm saying to you this morning, stop making noise. Love people. It no matter what you bring to them in terms of word, you could have, you, 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 you could have been the greatest orator, but you're a horrible person. Nobody's listening. That's what the word of God says, and I mean, say, it. read it. You say it was making noise, so let's love. And when we love people, then they will listen to us. It's not the other way around. It's not speak to them and then them listen. You see, Jesus was smart, you know. What did Jesus do when the people sat on the hill listening to him? Ready to listen? He fed them. And make sure there were no distractions, no worms moving around in their bellies to distract them. No wonder where we're going to get food from. He dealt with their social, their, their physical needs so that they, all eyes would be on him. Let us love. Not just in words. Let's move on. Set an example in faith. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see. Now all of us are exercising faith now. You see, I'm sitting down. I didn't check the chair. I just sat. I just dropped myself on the chair. If you're standing, you're having faith in your legs. That it will hold you up. But the ultimate faith is, in, is faith in Jesus. You see, we have to set an example. If we are saying to people, oh, you must have faith in God. But then when we pray, we don't believe. We're trying to work out everything for ourselves and we don't, we're not exercising faith in God to work things out. We cannot ask the world to have faith while we ourselves don't put faith into action. Romans 8, 28. And, and, and two weeks ago I read a different translation for this. And we know that all things... All things God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. Whatever situation we find ourselves in. We know that God is going to work it together for the good. Even if it's a bad one. That is hard to, to grapple with. But I know that he will be gonna good work in us. We'll be faithful to complete it. Faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So whenever our situations come, whether good or bad, we can trust God. We can demonstrate faith that he will take us through. Amen. We can't be faithless, but we're asking people to exercise faith in God. We have to set an example. Young people, we have to set an example. You're going to school and... God has said that I'm going to take you through school. But you're not exercising faith that he will. He said that he will. Don't worry about it. Just do your work. And don't forget to do his work. 
Because some of us are going through. Some of us will get the job. We ask God, Lord, I'm, I, I, I need this job. I finished with school. And ever since you get that job, the work of God gone to zero. No, Uncle Jolly, I have to work the money. I forget it. And, and you know what? Many times when we're working that money, that money goes quick. I was wondering, oh, my money done already. We're not putting our faith and trust in God. We have turned away from the things of God. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the leaders now are saying, oh, but we're not getting any offering anymore. Everybody's online. Nobody's giving their offering. But I don't have the money to spend. I don't have the money to give for my offering. But sometimes I have to check why our money is finishing so fast. Because we're not exercising faith to give. Give. The word of God says give and it will come back to you. What? Press down, shaking together and running over. That is mind blowing. When you give, it will come back to you. When you exercise faith in God by giving to God, he will bless you bountifully. So the little money where you earn and you feel like it's not enough, take some out and give. And you will see how God will bless. Oh, I should stop. Exer set an example in faith. Faith. Give him to God and watch him bless. Watch him bless you. Watch him bless your family. Watch him take you to school. Watch him take you through life. Watch him provide for you the right partner. Ex hey, exercise faith. I don't see anybody yet in the church. This is where young people normally get it wrong. I don't say so I forgot deal I forgot to find somebody myself. Exercise faith in God that He will find somebody for you. Matthew 6 33 says what? But seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And what? All these things shall be added unto you. Set an example in purity. Colossians 3 5 says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Put to death, kill, remove totally, not encourage, not rationalize, not indulge, keep. No, you mean, you, oh, you mean to keep in my pockets. You know, sometimes we, I, I used to, I used to keep pornography in my pocket. Until I hear a message finally after, after some years of struggling with it. And I put that to death. Now, you know what God do, do to me? I don't even watch a movie. Ask anybody know me, run me. Because I used to search for the movies and then move to the pornography. I used to say, oh, I may watch a little movie and then we just switch the channel. Now we have it all over. Set an example in purity. The things that come on your phone. The videos, the pictures, the groups that you're in and you look and you like. How can you like something when you really don't like it? And you know what I mean? Set an example. Don't even peek on it. Job, I think Job talks about covenant eyes. Whatever you let through your eyes, you can't press delete. For those who know about computer, you can't press delete. Set an example in purity. Don't look upon it. Tell the people them don't send you any of those videos. 
don't find yourself on YouTube watching them and encourage others to set an example. Now, a few years ago, long, a good, a good years ago, the girls' club come, came up with a shirt, and I said, it says something like, "I will remain pure until I'm married." Now that is still on the cards. We can't set an example in that way. I can't forget Sean Pike at camp one year. We call him name. And the guy said, oh, you, you know, I'm a girl. A church camp, you know. Oh, you know, you know. And the man said, yeah, that is true. I'm not having sex. So I'm to that. Everybody do. Set an example. Set an example. Step out and say, yes, I will remain pure until I'm married. I'm going to set an example. And I'm going to tell everybody why we can't post that. Why we can't put that on our, on our, on our DP? Why we can't put that on our, on our status? Hmm? Why we can't set an example in purity? And make the world see it. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to earth in it. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, greed, which is idolatry. We have to live what we preach. Don't rationalize the sons. As we close, the world is looking at us to see if the things we profess to believe are having an impact on our lives and when we can demonstrate what it is we become true influencers for Jesus are we influencing the world for Christ or are we being influenced by the world that's the last thing are we influencing the world for Christ or are we being influenced by the world are we salt and light are we changing our surroundings or are we allowing our surroundings to change us amen everyone just say the truth